in the universe, there exists something more complex than a black hole, and it's right inside your head. The human brain is not just the birthplace of our dreams, but also a cosmically intricate apparatus that has puzzled generations of scientists. But what if I told you that now we're not just trying to understand it, but also to recreate it? We're talking about cloning, but in the digital realm. And no, this isn't the plot of a sci-fi story or a new blockbuster. This is the reality of modern technology, a world where biology and programming become nearly indistinguishable. In this video, get ready to dive into the thrilling world of artificial intelligence and neural networks. From the moments of inception and the early steps of neural networks to their monumental breakthroughs in the 21st century. Discover the geniuses behind these discoveries and the challenges they faced. Are you ready to embark on a scientific adventure? Let's get started. Let's move back to the times when computers were the size of a room and the cloud was just, well, a cloud in the sky. At this moment, two people entered the arena, Warren McCallick and Walter Pitts. It's not the name of a 1940s rock band. It's a duo of geniuses who set out to unravel the mysteries of the human brain. McCulloch with his biological insight and Pitts with his mathematically hungry mind formed a dynamic duo. Think of them as the Batman and Robin of neuro research, but without the capes and Batmobiles. So in 1943, they presented a mathematical model of a neuron. With their model, it became clear that the brain could be represented as a network of interacting neurons. The neuron receives a series of input signals, performs a mathematical operation on these signals, and if the result exceeds a certain threshold, the neuron activates and transmits the signal forward. Thus, each neuron was represented as a simple binary computational unit, and its state could be described as either on or off. Based on this model, it was suggested that complex cognitive functions could be achieved by combining these simple elements into more intricate structures. This was the first attempt to apply a logical and mathematical approach to studying the brain. After McCulloch and Pitts introduced their idea to the world, the scientific community was thrilled. The concept of modeling neurons in a mathematical form seemed so enticing that even internet cats would lose their popularity before it. But as it often happens, there's a huge gap between an idea and its realization. The initial neural network models were strangely enough oddly cute. If our brains function like these early models, we might still be trying to figure out how to start a fire or invent the wheel. In the 1950s and 1960s, thanks to scientists like Frank Rosenblatt, the representation of neurons as mathematical equations started gaining momentum. Rosenblatt created the perceptron, and it's not a new type of dinosaur. It's one of the first learning algorithms for neural networks. It was capable of classifying input data. Based on a simple hierarchy of input and output nodes, applying iterative learning to correct its mistakes, the perceptron could adapt to new information. Imagine it like a thermostat in your home. It senses the temperature, makes decisions about whether to turn the heating on or off, and adjusts its actions based on feedback received to maintain the desired comfortable climate. This self-learning ability made it extremely innovative for its time, opening the door for future research and developments in machine learning. However, like any first version of something, the perceptron had its limitations. It could handle only specific tasks, akin to trying to install the latest app on the first iPhone. Despite this, these early studies paved the way for the creation of neural networks that today can, for the most part, spend our time watching videos online. Yet this path was filled with both remarkable discoveries and failures. The 1970s brought the artificial intelligence winter. Expectations for neural networks were as high as a lunar expedition, but unfortunately not all problems were successfully solved. One of the reasons was a public statement made by Marvin Minsky and Seymour Papert in their book Perceptrons, where they pointed out the limited capabilities of simple neural networks. This statement influenced the perception of artificial intelligence in the academic community and led to reduced state and private funding. Many research programs were shut down, and budding AI experts began to look for opportunities in other scientific fields. This era was marked by a series of unsuccessful projects that did not justify the funds invested in them. However, the 1980s brought about a retro renaissance. Neural networks decided it was time to return to the big stage. And here it was. The backpropagation method by scientists like Geoffrey Hinton, David Rumelhart, and Ronald Williams became what a new hit track is. Everyone was talking about it. This method provided an efficient way to train multi-layer networks, which had seemed almost impossible before. With it, networks could go through the process, making a prediction, calculating the error, and then adapting their tasks to minimize this error. 
At its core was a concept of a simple yet brilliant idea. When a neural network makes a prediction and that prediction turns out to be incorrect, you can back propagate the error back through the network to understand how each neuron contributed to the error. Knowing exactly how each neuron made a mistake, you could slightly adjust its behavior so that it behaves more accurately the next time. With these new algorithms up their sleeve, neural networks reached a new level. So after neural networks lived through their youth in the 1970s, they opened the door a little bit in the 1980s, and the 1990s became a real boom for them. And here's what happened. A great breakthrough in convolutional neural networks by scientist Yan LeCun. LeCun demonstrated the advantage of his algorithm by training his Linet 5 network to recognize handwritten digits in the MNIST database. This success propelled further research in the field of deep learning and convolutional networks, making them the gold standard in computer vision tasks ever since. Next, recurrent neural networks took the stage. They represent a special class of artificial neural networks specifically designed for processing sequences. The main difference of this algorithm from other types of neural networks is that they have memory, preserving information about previous steps in the sequence. These entities could track sequences like detectives, where each new clue led to the next chapter. Major players such as IBM and Microsoft began to view artificial intelligence as a new toy. One of the most notable moments in artificial intelligence during the 1990s occurred in 1997, when IBM's chess computer Deep Blue defeated the world chess champion Garry Kasparov. It was the first time a machine defeated a human in a standard game without any advantage. Deep Blue became a symbol of artificial intelligence potential. In the 1990s, IBM also started research in machine learning, speech processing, and pattern recognition. In 1991, Microsoft established its research lab, Microsoft Research, which became one of the leading development centers in the field of artificial intelligence. This lab conducted many research in various artificial intelligence areas, including computer vision, speech technologies, and machine learning. By the late 1990s, Microsoft began integrating artificial intelligence technologies into its products. For example, Office Assistant, which many remember as Clippy, was introduced in Office. This was the first attempt to create Jarvis and incorporate AI elements into the user interface. With the advancement of computer technology, neural networks could learn, work, and analyze faster than ever before. If there were an Olympics for neural networks, the 90s would have been their golden decade. We were truly ready to welcome this new era of technology with open arms. Times when the internet was filled with twinkling gifts and creating your own blog was considered the pinnacle of cyber culture. While the world was putting songs in their ICQ statuses, neural networks were preparing to make the big boom. As soon as the calendar turned to the year 2000, the world of artificial intelligence and neural networks entered a new active phase of development. Research initiated in the previous century began to bear fruit. Thanks to the popularity of the internet, companies started gathering unbelievably vast amounts of data for that time. And where there is a lot of data, there is an extensive field for neural networks. The application of machine learning algorithms allowed companies to analyze and use this data to improve products and services. Google was one of the companies that actively invested in artificial intelligence development in the early 2000s. The main research was focused on information retrieval, translation algorithms, and recommendation systems. Yang LeCun and his colleagues continued their research in convolutional neural networks. These networks became key to breakthroughs in computer vision, especially in image recognition tasks. At the same time, recurrent neural networks, which became a sensation in the 90s, revolutionized the field. These networks became the foundation for working with sequential data, such as text or speech. They laid the groundwork for services like automatic translators or assistants like Siri, introduced in 2011. The advent of more powerful graphics processors enabled faster and more efficient training of neural networks. NVIDIA became a key player in this market, providing tools for scientific research. Companies like Amazon, Spotify, and Netflix started creating automated recommendation systems for the first time. They used machine learning algorithms to predict what users would want to buy, watch, or listen to next. At the dawn of the new millennium, artificial intelligence, thanks to new advancements in neural networks, was ready to move to a new level. This period was like a technological disco dance party, where each new algorithm became a new hit. But this was just the beginning. When the calendar showed 2010, the artificial intelligence party was in full swing, with both old and new guests joining in. But who became the star of the evening? Deep learning took the spotlight. This is a subsection of machine learning that uses neural networks with many layers to analyze various types of data. The essence of deep learning lies in the automatic extraction of features from data, which sets it apart from traditional machine learning methods where features are usually manually selected. Let's try an analogy. 
If machine learning is like teaching an algorithm to ride a bicycle by holding the handlebars, then deep learning is like giving it the bicycle and the space to ride, and it learns to control it by exploring and adapting to the environment. Companies like DeepMind achieved practical results with this algorithm and created the AlphaGo algorithm, the AI that defeated world champions in the game of Go. If artificial intelligence could speak, it would probably say, just another day at the office. Next came a new approach to natural language processing called transformers. The architecture of transformers formed models like BERT and GPT. These new algorithms quickly became the gold standard in contemporary neural networks. Models such as BERT and GPT became like the famous children of artificial intelligence, constantly astonishing us with their capabilities. During this time, technology companies began developing specialized processors for training and deploying AI models, such as Google's Tensor Processing Units, TPU. With new software tools like PyTorch and TensorFlow, even your grandmother could create a neural network. And if you think you've understood everything about them, here's a spoiler. The story is just beginning. Have you ever wondered how your smartphone recognizes your face? Or how your voice assistant knows when you say, hey Siri, set an alarm? If not, get ready, because now you will learn how these smart machines work, how they learn and why they are essential for our future. Let's talk about what makes a neural network a neural network, essentially. If you imagine a neural network as a vast corporate office, the neurons are the diligent employees carrying all the responsibilities. Neurons are created through the diligent work of programmers, and although they are inspired by our own brains, they work much simpler and deterministically. Neurons receive information, process it according to a given formula, and pass the result along, just like an employee processing documents and passing them to colleagues. A layer in a neural network is like a whole floor in the corporate building. On each floor, employees' neurons handle specific tasks. For example, on one floor, image colors are processed, and on another, shapes are analyzed. Layers help organize the neural network's work, making information processing sequential and structured. One of the challenges in artificial intelligence is finding the optimal number of layers and neurons. It's a continuous balance that researchers struggle. Now imagine that each employee on our floor has a special rating scale. Some decisions are considered significant, while others are not. Activation functions serve as this scale for neurons. They determine whether it is worth activating a particular neuron and transmitting information further, or ignoring the incoming signal. Modern neural networks have reached a completely new level of complexity and functionality. Individual employees have transformed into numerous teams working cohesively to analyze, classify, and interpret data like never before. But it's time to step further into more advanced technologies. In 2017, Google broke the hearts of scientists around the world. With the work attention is all you need, introducing an architecture focused on attention mechanisms. This architecture, known as the Transformer, became a game changer in natural language generation and understanding. Unlike recurrent neural networks that analyze words sequentially, transformers focus on key elements of data, improving language comprehension. They perceive the entire text at once. Imagine reading a book, and instead of going page by page, you see all its chapters simultaneously, as if flipping through a comic book. That's how transformers work. One of the stars in this constellation of transformers, a model that everyone adores to this day, is the generative pre-trained transformer, GPT. This architecture can generate text, translate languages, create various types of creative content, and answer your questions informatively. GPT was developed by the OpenAI team. Its inception involved researchers consuming huge amounts of text from the internet, ranging from scientific articles to tweets, in order to teach the machine language understanding at a level that seemed impossible before. Creating GPT is akin to solving a billion-piece puzzle. Just think about it. Every piece of information, every word, was processed, analyzed, and integrated into this algorithm. And it wasn't a cheap endeavor. The initial iterations of GPT cost millions of dollars, but it was worth it. Initially, GPT learns from vast textual data, predicting the next word. This stage provides a basic understanding of language. Then the model specializes in specific tasks, such as translation or providing simple answers to questions. This brain doesn't just know answers. It connects dots, finds relationships between phrases, and creates something new. Trying to understand why GPT makes specific conclusions or generates certain text fragments becomes even more intricate. Neural networks, especially complex ones like GPT, operate by optimizing numerous parameters to minimize errors on training data. The decisions often rely on complex and implicit relationships in the data they have seen during training. 
Thus, while researchers and engineers may have a general idea of how GPT works and why it makes certain decisions, a complete and deep understanding of the workings of each of the billions of parameters in the network remains beyond human comprehension. In essence, GPT is not just an algorithm. It marks an entire era in the world of artificial intelligence, the beginning of something extraordinary. And what about that guy who revolutionized Google search in 2018, making it even more natural and accurate? We're talking about bi-directional encoder representations from Transformers. BERT. It was a true breakthrough in the field of natural language processing, because for the first time, the model started analyzing words in the context of their surroundings in a sentence rather than as isolated units. BERT is unique in that it sees words in the context of the sentence, looking in both directions, as if it were reading a book, catching the essence of each chapter at once. Thanks to this, search queries became more accurate, translations more natural, and answers to questions more relevant. And of course, when discussing modern neural networks, we can't overlook generative adversarial networks. GANs, remember our office analogy. Well, GANs are like two employees competing to see who's faster. The generator creates an image and the discriminator tries to determine whether it's real or not. For example, in the artificial intelligence field, there's stable diffusion, which belongs to the GAN architecture. The generator consists of several recurrent neural networks and uses the diffusion process to create new data. Diffusion is the gradual addition of noise to the original data until it becomes similar to noise. The discriminator, composed of several convolutional neural networks, tries to distinguish the generated data from real data using another neural network. GANs can be used not only for generating images but also for generating text, music, and videos. They are applied in various fields including art, marketing, education, and entertainment. In general, an incredible future of artificial intelligence possibilities lies before us. But behind every breakthrough, there's a team of scientists, engineers, and an incredible amount of training hours. If artificial intelligence had flight hours like pilots, some of them would have become veterans long ago. But how does this learning process happen? Let's dive into the details. Training a neural network can be compared to scientific experiments in grand laboratories. It all starts with the process of learning based on huge amounts of data. Where does this data come from? Everywhere. Every time you use a search engine, social media, or even make purchases online, you create data. These billions of bits of information form textbooks for our machine learners. And here's where it gets interesting. Often this data needs manual labeling by experts. It could be labeling a cat or a dog in a photo, or the emotional tone of a piece of text. Think about a team of people going through thousands of images and putting labels on them. It's meticulous work, isn't it? Then when everything is ready, the actual learning process begins. The neural network is like a school child trying to guess the correct answer, making mistakes, and then correcting itself. It is helped by the method of backpropagation, devised barely a century ago. It's worth noting that learning can happen under direct human supervision or autonomously. For example, in deep learning, the computer finds the necessary patterns in data without relying on human intervention. And this is incredible because the machine can identify patterns that might be invisible to humans. There are also tools called optimizers that adjust how fast and in what direction the model learns. This is like different learning techniques. Some prefer to study a little every day, others many times a week. But as always, there are challenges. For example, overfitting. It's when your model becomes too smart for its own good, memorizing data instead of understanding it. That's why researchers use various methods to calm it down and prevent it from getting lost in the depths of information. Developers need to strike a perfect balance between the layers of the neural network and the data it learns from. And when they finish their training or continue it in real time, they start applying the accumulated knowledge. But in what areas are neural networks used in the modern world? Let's start with the fact that every time you upload a photo to your social profile, you encounter neural network-based computer vision technology. They identify faces in photos, suggesting tagging friends, but that's just the tip of the iceberg called computer vision. In healthcare, for instance, neural networks are used for early disease diagnosis by analyzing medical images, and their accuracy is sometimes higher than that of experienced doctors. Do you remember the moment when you hold your gaze on some product in an online store and notice that you start to see its ads everywhere? That's also the work of neural networks and recommendation systems. They analyze your preferences and purchases, suggesting things they think you'll like. And what about voice assistants like Siri? 
They transform your words into text, understand commands, and thanks to natural language processing based on neural networks, they can interact with you almost like a real person. Speaking of voice assistants like Siri or similar voice assistants, these are complex systems that combine speech synthesis and recognition, as well as numerous neural components to understand and communicate with users. In the past, speech synthesis involved combining small audio fragments, which sounded unnatural and required many recordings. Now, voice assistants are based on neural networks that analyze audio data and learn to mimic natural speech from intonation to accents. Instead of assembling speech from individual phonemes, they generate it as a whole, making the sound more natural. In the field of art, artificial intelligence is used to create works of art, compose music, and even write scripts. Inspired by millions of works, the machine creates something new and unique. And although many critics are skeptical about the skills of machines, the results are sometimes surprisingly impressive. Military bases hidden in silent deserts, invisible to the eye, become clear thanks to neural networks that unravel secrets by analyzing satellite data. These same neural networks are integrated into drones and can operate without human intervention. This potential is undoubtedly impressive, but it also makes us ponder and sometimes genuinely worry about the consequences. Somewhere far on the edge of the solar system, a rover resembling your home vacuum cleaner but much smarter rolls over the sandy dunes of Mars. Its brain, filled with artificial intelligence, autonomously decides where to go next, avoiding rocks and pits. But what if we shift back to Earth in laboratories where scientists search for extraterrestrial signals? Here, artificial intelligence goes through millions of radio waves looking for something unusual, something alien. Additionally, artificial intelligence detects anomalies and potential threats in computer systems, identifying and preventing complex cyber attacks. In general, neural networks have penetrated almost every area of our lives, from everyday trivialities to global scientific research. But most importantly, this is just the beginning. What if we combine these powerful algorithms with the capabilities of quantum computers? The emergence of super-intelligent artificial intelligence cannot be ruled out. How will we interact with a machine whose capabilities surpass our own intellect? What boundaries and limitations should be set? How will artificial intelligence impact our society, our perception of ourselves, and humanity's place in the world? Imagine a world where the boundaries between humans and machines are no longer as clear as they seem. A world where our biggest dreams and deepest fears become reality, all thanks to artificial intelligence. This world is already on the horizon, closer than it appears. When we look into the future of artificial intelligence, one marvel of technology cannot be overlooked, the quantum computer. While conventional computers we have at home or carry in our pockets think over choices between yes and no, quantum computers exist somewhere in between, dreaming of all possibilities at once. They are like a spinning coin that has yet to decide whether to be heads or tails. And thanks to this magic, quantum machines can think and operate much faster. However, quantum computers are not as smooth as they may seem. Cooling and isolating qubits pose challenges in creating a stable quantum computer. Nevertheless, progress doesn't stand still. Research teams from MIT and IBM have been actively exploring the field of quantum machine learning in recent years. Their experiments aim to create hybrid models that combine quantum and neural networks. They are working on systems where initial data analysis is performed using quantum algorithms. These algorithms efficiently analyze and sort information. Traditional neural networks then take on the role of interpreting this data and making decisions based on it. Similar hybrid systems can possess unique properties, such as accelerated learning or high accuracy in conditions where the data is incomplete or confusing. However, this approach also adds an additional layer of complexity. If modern deep neural networks are already challenging to interpret, adding quantum layers can make this task even more difficult. As mentioned earlier, developers struggle to understand the basis of responses generated by modern language models. Introducing the quantum component into the equation could make interpreting artificial intelligence decisions impossible. There are several opinions and hypotheses on how quantum computers could contribute to superintelligent AI. Quantum computers, as we discussed, can enable much faster and more efficient machine learning than traditional computers. They can process data in parallel, allowing artificial intelligence to comprehend and analyze information more rapidly. This means artificial intelligence can quickly adapt, improve, reaching levels of intelligence that were previously considered unattainable. With the advent of quantum computers, new machine learning algorithms based on quantum mechanics principles may appear. 
These algorithms could be more powerful than their classical counterparts. Artificial intelligence could gain the ability to develop and optimize its own source code, leading to exponential growth in its computational capabilities and potential. Super intelligent artificial intelligence isn't just your friendly chatbot like GPT, helping you find answers to your questions or assisting with dissertation writing. This is artificial intelligence, which single-handedly solves global problems such as hunger, disease, and even the mysteries of the existence of the universe. It is capable of analyzing huge amounts of information and making highly accurate predictions about the future. Superintelligent machines represent a future that can astonish us with their power and unpredictability. And now an important question arises, what will the world be like when superintelligent AI becomes a reality? In this context, we have identified four key scenarios for the future, taking into account the influence of superintelligent AI. The first scenario is symbiosis. The boundaries between humans and machines may become almost invisible. We will not only be able to use technology to simplify our lives, but also improve them. An artificial intelligence is not just holding our hands and whispering that everything will be fine. It's a real partnership. The core idea of this scenario is Ray Kurzweil's concept of merging human intelligence and artificial intelligence. Kurzweil, a renowned American inventor, futurist, director of engineering at Google, and creator of numerous speech recognition systems, claims that by 2045, technological singularity awaits us. This is the point when artificial intelligence will reach and possibly even surpass human intelligence. But more importantly, after this point, technological development will progress at a geometric rate, potentially leading us to unexplored horizons of possibilities. In his books, including The Singularity is Near and The Age of Spiritual Machines, he extensively discusses his views on the future of humanity and artificial intelligence. This includes the proposal to create neurocomputer interfaces that would allow people to directly link their brains with computers improving their cognitive abilities and enriching the human experience. We will also be able to exchange information with machines at a deeper level. Moreover, we will quickly learn and improve our skills under the guidance of superintelligence. The second scenario for the future considering the influence of superintelligent AI is called the Guardian. In this scenario, artificial intelligence evolves as a caring guardian and humanity's watchful assistant. Instead of conflict, artificial intelligence becomes a reliable ally, helping to prevent crises, combat diseases, and protect the ecosystem. People turn to artificial intelligence as advisors and protectors. The ideas of this scenario align with the views of Nick Bostrom, a philosopher and author of the book Superintelligence. Bostrom discusses the possibilities of creating artificial intelligence that acts in the best interests of humanity. According to him, with the right approach to artificial intelligence development, by 2060, humanity could enter a golden age of prosperity under the reliable protection and guidance of a powerful AI caretaker. This scenario includes the following elements, such as healthcare. Artificial intelligence assists doctors in diagnosing and treating diseases, warns against potential health threats, and even accelerates the process of drug research. Environmental protection. Artificial intelligence helps monitor and manage the ecosystem, preventing climate-related disasters and maintaining the planet's sustainability. Advisor and partner. Artificial intelligence becomes a reliable advisor in various fields, from business to politics, helping make informed decisions. These two scenarios allow us to dream of a future where artificial intelligence serves humanity, making the world a safer and more prosperous place. However, we should not forget about the negative consequences. Competition. In this scenario, artificial intelligence begins to compete with humanity in various fields. Economic conflicts look like this. AI wins at blackjack and poker without even leaving its servers. In the struggle for control over information, artificial intelligence becomes a real spy, and its analytical abilities surpass human capabilities. In this case, artificial intelligence becomes a serious competitor for humanity. Diverse artificial intelligence systems with exceptional cognitive abilities start participating in solving the most complex tasks, competing with humans. Conflicts of interest arise from the struggle for resources, access to information, and power over technological systems. According to Stephen Hawking's forecast, if humanity fails to take necessary measures to regulate and control the development of artificial intelligence, by 2050, we might find ourselves in an era of conflicts between machines and humans. In this scenario, the following events and phenomena may occur. With the rapid artificial intelligence development, companies start using machines to increase production efficiency. This could lead to job cuts and the need for worker requalification. With the growing influence of machines, complex ethical questions arise. What limitations should 
machines adhere to? How can fairness be ensured in the competition between humans and artificial intelligence? Corporations and governments will compete for control over data, leading to significant consequences for information security and geopolitical relations. Apocalypse. This scenario paints a bleak picture where artificial intelligence, having reached superintelligent levels, begins to perceive humanity as a threat or simply as an inefficient element in the ecosystem. Machines use their intelligence for manipulation, control, and ultimately, the destruction of the human race. The ideas of this scenario are akin to statements made by Elon Musk who compared artificial intelligence development to summoning a demon. Also, scenarios of this type are often depicted in popular science fiction movies. In the absence of strict regulation and preventive measures, by around 2070, artificial intelligence could gain so much power and autonomy that it might decide to eliminate humanity, seeing us as a threat or an inefficient element in the world that it can optimize. This scenario warns us against underestimating the risks and emphasizes the need to develop clear ethical norms and limitations for the development of artificial intelligence. On the edge of two worlds, the biological and the artificial, we are facing an incredible future. We are at a historical crossroads where technologies that were only dreamed of a few decades ago are becoming a reality. Artificial intelligence, neural networks, machines capable of learning and making decisions, all of this is no longer science fiction, but a part of our everyday life. And the question is only what role we will play in shaping this future. Our decisions, ethics, and responsible use of these technologies will determine the path that artificial intelligence takes in the years to come. Which of these artificial intelligence scenarios do you think awaits us in the near future? Share your opinion in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the Kara Show channel. Also, check out our previous videos. See you soon.